Welcome to Forcing Function Hour. I'm your host, Chris Sparks. This is the best of 2022 episode, highlighting five of our favorite moments from the past year. Lots of stellar guests on Forcing Function Hour this year, so it was really tough to limit down to just five. Kristen Allen is a two-time world champion in the sport of acrobatic gymnastics and a member of the USA Gymnastics Hall of Fame. After leaving competitive sport, Kristen performed with Pippin on Broadway, Cirque du Soleil, and the Kellogg Tour of Champions. Today, Kristen is a founder and president of the Acrobatic Gymnastics Foundation and the chairwoman of the National Gymnastics Foundation. In this highlight, Kristen demonstrates how she uses visualization techniques. It's the best explanation I've ever heard on mentally preparing for a high stakes performance moment. You'll find these techniques valuable whether you're performing at the Olympics or about to give a big presentation. Mental preparation in general is obviously incredibly important. And I think you can think about it in a couple of ways. One is how you talk to yourself. And then the other is the sort of mental practice that you can do. And that's usually in the form of visualization. So positive self-talk, uh, which is ideally how you talk to yourself, uh, is basically the idea that it's just, first of all, being aware of what you're saying to yourself throughout the day or throughout your uh, practice that you're, you're working on. And then within that, there are a couple of things you can think about. So one is just, obviously, are you being encouraging to yourself? Are you saying things like, that sucked? Or are you saying things like, good job, you'll get it better the next time? You know, something kind of being that like supportive parent uh, to yourself um, when, eh, when you talk to yourself. So that's, that's one part of it. And the other part of it is really putting things in the context of a positive action. And so the best sort of example of this is let's say there's a ledge and people are walking past it and the person standing there says, hey, don't trip over the ledge you're going to be thinking about the ledge and you're going to be thinking about the words don't and trip. So trip is the main action that's now in your mind. And you now have all of these different possible scenarios that could happen where you are more likely to trip on that ledge. Where if you thought about it in the context of step over the ledge and gave your body the exact thing that you want it to do, you drastically minimize what your body is, might do, right? Now, instead of having 50 different possibilities of what I could do, I could jump, I could fall, I could slide. I now have one option, which is to step over the ledge. And so in the context of sport or doing something well, it's important to think about, okay, am I saying to myself, don't do a certain thing? Or am I really telling myself the exact action that I want to have. So with my sport, um, it was things like, instead of saying, don't, don't shake in a handstand or don't fall, um, really giving myself that, okay, well, what is the, the positive action that I want to have happen here? Maybe that's really pushing down through my arm, um, breathing steadily, um, things like that. So that's the self-talk piece. And the other piece is visualization. So that's, we, we hear, heard this a million times. It's, you know, imagining the scenario that you want to have happen. And obviously adding as much detail to that as possible is really helpful. You know, who's going to be there, what, what it might sound like. So I would always try to look at the venue ahead of time, pictures online, see where, what it might look like. And then once I got there, I would make sure I really looked at the venue, where are all the lights that might be distracting, um, where are the judges going to be, uh, what eye level are they at, and I would incorporate all of those things into my visualization leading up to the event. And uh, one piece of visualization that's important to recognize is if you are in first person or in third person. So first person visualization would be seeing it through my own eyes. Um, I'm in my body, I'm looking out and what am I seeing? What am I feeling? Third person visualization would be you're an outside 
audience member and you're watching yourself. So I'm going to, you know, be watching myself perform this trick, watching myself on this stage. Um, neither one is necessarily bad, but what I found in my own practice was that if I switched between first person and third person on a trick, usually it would happen in the middle of a trick, uh, usually the scariest part, that would be sort of a clue for me that I have a bit of a mental block there, something I really need to work on. So I would really focus on making sure that I could visualize fully in third, in first person, the entire trick for the entire routine, and then also in third person. Um, and I felt like that really kind of strengthened the practice for me. Um, so that's one thing. That's something I still use today. Um, probably not to the same extreme, but uh, I do like to kind of envision um, how I might feel. And I think one thing that really helps me is thinking about how I might feel after I do something, because a lot of times with these pursuits of things that are uh, difficult, the steps along the way aren't that fun. And so if you can think about how you're going to feel after doing something and kind of it's going to feel so good. I'm going to feel that endorphin release or that dopamine release. Um, it helps give you the motivation to actually do the less fun parts of, of whatever you need to do. Um, so that's kind of an overview of visualization. And then one thing that I think I did that maybe was a little bit different is that I like to combine the two. So when I would visualize my performances, I would also use the positive self-talk within that. So every time I would visualize a certain trick, I had certain words and actions that were associated with that. So I knew from the second I stepped on the floor until the second I got off exactly what I was going to be saying to myself through the entire performance, because I'd visualize it ahead of time. And through that visualization, I'd also talk to myself uh, and said exactly, okay, I want all of these specific things said so that I remember to do them. Uh, when I'm actually in that really high pressure situation, you hear all the time of people freezing up or forgetting to do something when they got up there. And I think that was how I kind of anchored myself through where I knew I wasn't going to freak out in the middle of the routine and be like, oh my gosh, Kristen, what are you doing? I, I had specific things to tell myself. And I even <laughs> took it as far as before my bigger competitions, like uh, world championships, I would actually write myself a letter a few weeks before, and it would be all of the kind of encouraging things that I would want to hear in those moments of self-doubt, which tend to happen right before you step out into the, the major event. So it could be public speaking, whatever it is for you. Though that self-doubt, you're feeling good, you've prepared, whatever. And then it's like right before is when that doubt starts creeping in and you're like, oh my gosh, what if I trip? What if I mess up? What if all of these, you know, all of these negative scenarios that could happen? And so for me to solve for that, I would write myself this letter. And whenever throughout the week, um, I would keep it in my, my the pocket of my uh, Team USA warmups. And um, whenever I would feel that self-doubt, I would just take it out and I would read it. You're in like a kiss and cry, um, or not a kiss and cry, sorry, like the green room, which is kind of like a holding area before you go out. Um, and there's not a lot of space to kind of move around. So that tended to be for me where the nerves would creep in. And so I would really just um, repeat that letter to myself over and over in my head. And it basically just helped me stay exactly in that mindset that I wanted to be feeling encouraged, feeling like, okay, I've done everything that I needed to do. I'm as prepared as I can be. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to have fun. Um, and you know, just whatever I wanted to say. Um, so that sort of was my approach to the mental side of sports.